In the last three years of my degree, I have been lucky enough to call four cities home. I studied my first year in San Francisco, I lived for eight months in Berlin, I studied a semester in Seoul in South Korea, I lived in London, and in my final year I'll be moving to Argentina and then Taipei in Taiwan. Like what? My younger self would never have imagined that that would be the reality of my university life. It has been a dream come true for that to be my university experience. It has been the most personality defining, life changing, wonderful time. And I think it's so easy to romanticize. I also generally only share the wonderful parts of this experience online, but there are so many tough parts to it behind the scenes. And I really wanna talk about that today. Maybe you've also studied abroad or you're considering it, or maybe you've moved around a lot during your life, but I hope this provides some more insight into what it's actually like. Number one culture shock. No matter how much research you do about a place, culture shock is just always a thing. It can be so hard to make someone new feel like home when you just don't feel like you fit in culturally. For example, you're used to always chatting with your friends on your commute to work or your commute to school. And then all of a sudden you move to Korea where every single person on the bus will stare at you if you're talking until you stop talking. It can be the tiniest things like the way that strangers interact with you, the way that supermarkets work, how you do rubbish disposal, like everything, every single part of what you've known, how you've been raised, the value systems that you hold, that is different in different places in the world and it can just be hard to get used to. Number two, for me, it was having a budget of four months. Most of the time I would only stay in a city for four months. And now that I've done it a few times, it always goes the same way. The first month is this insane culture shock, working out how the city works, working out how to do transport, how does the infrastructure work? Can I make friends here? Where do I find a gym? Where do I exercise? How do I find cheap food places? How do I find cool events? How do I live here? How do I survive here? The second month, cool. You've worked out the really, really hard parts of like the culture shock, the learning, the new place. But bam, for me, that's when uni suddenly starts getting hard. The grace period is over. They start throwing work your way, writing minimum an essay a week. And then cool, you're slowly adjusting to that. You get to the third month. The third month is where you're really in your groove. You have set up some routines. You know where to buy your food. You maybe even are starting to make friends. You've gotten to know the layout of the city. You know where you're going. And then you reach the fourth month where you're almost feeling like a local and you're planning your next move. You're planning summer or you're planning where you're going next semester. You're thinking about packing. You're thinking about trying to tick off every single place that you haven't seen yet. You've got final season at university. It is the most hectic take four months ever full of FOMO and you know fear of missing out on all the incredible things that you could be doing in the city like trying to soak up the experience as much as you can while you have it it's falling in love with the place and the people only to be forcibly ripped away from it in a few months and number three is living somewhere for that period of time is deep enough that you start to feel like a local but shallow enough that you never really fit in. Like you're never really gonna understand everything. You're not a tourist, but you're not a local. Maybe you've learned the language enough now to really have conversations, you know? You can go into a shop and you know the locals and you can have a good chat, but you're not staying long enough to be properly fluent, to be properly integrated, to have long-term friends, long-term relationships. Number four, while I'm in each of those cities, I also have to navigate the visa process for the next city. So it's like, even while I'm being there trying to be present, I've got my foot in the door of the next place because visas take forever to be processed. For example, I was in Berlin living my best life, but I was still having to go to the Korean embassy to sort my visa for Seoul. So it just feels like you're always running, trying to catch up with what's happening next and that you're not being fully present where you are in that city and soaking up the incredible experience that you're fortunate enough to have. Number five, the stress of balancing university with traveling that much. I really don't think I talk about it enough on here, just how like it, hard it is. <laughs> it's so hard. My uni gives us so much work 
all unis are tough, but like, my God, I don't know if they're all this tough. I almost reach burnout every semester because it's just an insane amount of essays, insane amount of readings, active classes. We do an internship in every city. So we're in the working culture there. And then we also have roommates. So, you know, that could be a whole semester in itself, just learning how to navigate social dynamics, how to make friends, how to look after your house and make sure it's always clean and you're interacting well. But then you throw on top of it all the heavy workload and the fact that you're moving countries and moving cultures all the time. And it can just be so, so intense. As a benefit, you become a very flexible person. In many ways, I feel like you could drop me anywhere in the world in any culture or living with like any kind of person and I'll sort of just figure it out because that's what I've been forced to do for the last few years is how it feels, but it's not relaxing. Again, another benefit, you really have to learn what habits are essential to keeping you, you. Like if you have a roommate who always wants to go to bed at 3 a.m. but you thrive off of having enough sleep and waking up early, then it's up to you to define that for yourself and to know that that's important to you and then to make it happen or to find time for things like yoga and meditation. Like that's so important to me and no one's gonna do it for me. So, you know, even though life is stressful and hectic, I've got to carve out the time to make those habits happen. Number six, love life. Guys, I don't even know where to start with the whole love life thing and how unideal it is in this crazy study abroad Minerva program. Let me run you through some of the best scenarios. You have four. Scenario one, you have a long distance relationship from home. You see them in the summer, you manage to navigate the time differences, but you live most of your degree never seeing them. You have all these life-changing experiences and it's not with your significant other. Scenario two, you find someone in Minerva in university and in my cohort, there's like 160 people. So it's not the biggest pool of people, but it's possible. That means you get to travel the world with them. You have someone who really relates to the crazy study abroad experiences, but it also means it's gonna be incredibly intense for you because there's not much separation between your lives. Your friends will overlap, your experiences will overlap, you're probably gonna be sharing a room together. And if you break up, oof, it's a small community, so good luck. Number three, you meet someone in one of the rotation cities. You have a whirlwind romance, you fall deeply in love, and then you leave. And maybe you never see them again, and maybe you can't even get a visa for that country because you just have a weaker passport. Or maybe you start a long distance relationship with them and go on for the rest of your degree, not seeing them in person, not even sure if you can go back to that country and get a visa in the future. Or finally, number four, you have hookups in each city or you remain happily single. And so those are your love life options. None of them is ideal, let me tell you. Generally, you also don't choose your path, right? So you don't really choose who you end up liking. But I think it is such a formative time of your life in your early 20s and love life and relationships, it is a big part of finding yourself. So it's hard moving around so much and also navigating that. Number seven is losing friends from home. I guess you have this a bit whenever you leave secondary school and start uni, like you have less daily contact with your friends. But when you have this added layer of always being in a different country with a different time zone, and then also absolutely changing your worldview because you've lived in all these different cultures and you have friends from everywhere and you have these insane life-defining experiences, which just aren't relatable to your friends back home, um, you just grow apart. I still have a lot of friends from home and from school, but I think that is one of the biggest things I mourn in the degree that I chose is just, I can't really invest back in my roots back home that much because I'm just not physically there most of the year. Like it's possible to keep friendships, it's just a lot harder. And then when you're also under a lot of stress and pressure at uni, like you just don't always have the time to keep up with everyone and that's sad. And I guess it's okay to look back fondly on friendships that you've had and not have any animosity in how things drifted apart. But I think it's still sad and worth recognizing. Also for me, I found 
I often get the biggest sense of comfort and sense of home when I'm in international communities. I really love being in communities with this mixed match culture because it's just so familiar from uni now. So those are some of the dark sides of studying abroad and in particular studying abroad in many places. I'd like to talk a bit about my concept of home and what home means to me now. Before my gap year, I didn't even question the thought of home. When I thought of home, it was my hometown in the UK with my family. But now that I've lived in a few different places and lived there for a long period of time and made so many memories there, I really feel like I have home in multiple places. There is a piece of me, there is a piece of home in Hebangchon in Seoul, in Kreuzberg in Berlin. And maybe even more than that, home to me really is people and the people that I've shared these experiences with and every time we have conversations about these places it's like I'm finding a piece of home again. I think a sad part of this new concept of home is that I'm always yearning for another home. Like when I'm in the UK obviously I'm happy and present and I love my family, I love being there but I'm also like ah oh, I miss Berlin and I miss waking up every day to that life. Or, oh my God, I miss being in San Francisco and I miss like waking up to the glorious sun and like going down to the bay and getting coffee at the place I'd always go to. They almost feel like phases of my life in each place. Music has become so essential to me because it can pull me back into the lives that I had in each place and like reminisce them. In general, it feels weird to make a video on the dark sides of studying abroad because like it is the biggest privilege, the biggest, best experience of my life thus far. If you have the opportunity, please, please travel. If you can go interrailing, if you can go to a country near you, if you can even explore areas of your own country that you haven't, just do it. Like it widens your whole perspective on the world and yourself. My comfort zone has expanded so much. Like it's just not stressful, the thought of being somewhere new or meeting new people anymore because I've done it so many times, you know? And I know it's gonna be okay, even if it's initially scary. And finally, I just feel such a deep love for people and the world in general. How fascinating that we have so many different cultures and languages and experiences in the world and yet we're all just human and we're all inherently the same. And you can find things to relate with people literally anywhere. You can find parts of yourself within every culture and place. That's just a little bit of my experience. I hope you found it useful in some way or maybe relatable. Please share your experiences with me if you have any and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Oh, and if you want any more videos about my university or my experience, please let me know and I can film it for you this summer. Bye.